So, hello everyone. I think we can start with the session right now. So, thank you all for coming so early in the morning, more or less sober. I'm Jelk, I'm going to uh, make a session about how you should grow a group of business or what we think in our company, how a group of business should be grown or, or made grown. So, if this now works. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a couple of things. First, who, who we are, short intro, uh, how to start a Drupal based company because this is a basic point that you need to master somehow. Um, how to find the right customer and projects for your company because this is also a big problem for the most of the startups. Uh, it's what growth and strategy things need to be done to make your organization work. And then I'm open, open for the question. I hope that we will have enough time for that. So, we are since uh, 2008 in the Drupal business. Uh, most of our projects are medium and big community sit sites. Our verticals are uh, marketing organizations, uh, Content providers, telecom companies, etc., 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 government agencies as well. If you're interested, you can see about our references down there in the in this link. But principally, we are in the Drupal business for the last six years. We're going to stay there, I think, for a while at least. Uh, I have held a session in Ljubljana last year on the Drupal Camp. It was uh, targeted mostly to the customers. Uh, and have told something to the customers what they should take into account when they need to uh, select a Drupal provider. But I have seen in the audience that uh, what was actually expected was not that, it was something else. So I have decided to make this, this year a session uh, what Drupal companies need to do uh, to grow beyond the one-man show. So. I'm not going to bother you with uh, fancy presentation, animation, those kind of things. Uh, there's the, this just is a straight text and a couple of images. Uh, but uh, the first question, if I'm talking about the business of the Drupal, is are we actually capable of lecturing anyone about that? Well, um, in short, no. We still don't know how a Drupal business needs to be grown, but uh, we have survived uh, the last six years and grown to 10 plus people as a company. So I think, at least from the point of the evolution, we are capable of saying one of those things that could be useful for you. Um, I cannot give you a prescription how you can make your Drupal business functioning. But I can at least point you to a couple of things that you should do or that you should not do. So it is not going to be something very straightforward as this thing here. Don't go there, but this is the real direction. Uh, so can I learn something from this session that can be used in my company? Uh, I think the answer is for the most of the people, no. Uh, what we're offering here in this session is a couple of concepts and they have to think through the things. Um, why it is not so that any one of you will start a multi-million dollar business with the software? There are certain qualities that need to be made. Um, you need to start an IT company. You need to survive in a market long enough to make a name and you need to get organized beyond one man show. And anyone who has ever been a, a teenager and needed to clean up his own room or his own room know how hard it is to keep things together. When there is 
more than one people, there is the mess starts. So uh, to start a successful software business, not only the um, Drupal business, you need to have a couple of special qualities. You need to be uh, brave to do that, or you need to be desperate enough because something is not just working for you. Or uh, you must be also capable of managing the legal part of the company. Contracts, contracts with employees, contracts with customers, legal things like uh, taxes and so on. Uh, this is also relatively important and I can uh, understand that two or three years ago you need to sell enough to make your growth sustainable, uh, which is also, also connected to that, that you need to manage a cash flow. So if you are not capable of uh, paying your employees, no software company. Sorry about that. And also, uh, most of the software guys uh, think of them as a geeks uh, that are doing their own things, that, 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 that they are the best, and have never seen a programmer who actually thinks that he is coding bad. Such thing does not exist, but you need to be capable of working with other people and need to be capable of accepting what they are saying to you in a certain way. On the other way, to be successful in the Drupal business, you need to be a technology freaks. So all those qualities don't actually match together, okay? So most of the time you need to look something like this, okay? You are some kind of medieval monster, some kind of uh, griffon, half dragon, half lion, half whatsoever. Um, most of us as are not capable of those mutant transformations. So there is some prerequisites that need to be done to make things happen. Uh, everyone knows those names: Microsoft, Apple, Hewlett Packard, Google. If you look what I have uh, written in the brackets, you will see that almost all successful names in the software business have started a business in that way that they did not do the vaulting alone. So. In the first software company that I have started to work with, that was 20 years ago, uh, there was three desks. And in those times it was usual that the software company also needs to deliver hardware. So one guy had a tool box and he started to do the hardware. The second one has the only computer in the office, so he started to do the software development. And the third guy had a telephone, so he started to uh, do the telephone things, so marketing, talk with the customers, etc., etc., etc. So they have managed in that time their business is relatively good. So there is something in a separate task to the special people. Principally, I see a software company that could be successful as a combination of a guy who is more of a technological geek on the, on the one side and a visionary seller. Uh, I think that Apple is the, the quintessential example of that. There was um, Wozniak and, and other Steve who played their roles according to that what it is, it is expected from a software company. You know? Because it is also important to project that kind of image to the outside. Also, people who are doing things alone are losing courage very quickly. And if you have problems with the cash flow, and this is often, often an, uh, at the start of your business, you're going to get scared to the, yeah, let's just not say it. So, the first part in doing a Drupal company is that you need to become a Drupal geek. This is a good start for that. You have visited the um, Drupal camps and cons. The other part is also that you need to contribute to the community somehow, to be capable of understanding the Drupal and what is actually working in the Drupal. Um, the less funny part of that is that you need to be capable of working a lot. I mean, really a lot. Every day, seven days a week. Drupal is unfortunately not everyone's toy. There is a lot of mixed technologies around. Uh, so you need to be capable of mastering all that. 
To do all that, you need time. To have time, you need someone who is going to fund you. Anyway, so uh, how you can master the Drupal and be capable of surviving in the meantime. Get money from someone else. Get financed by someone else. Do it as a student. Uh, this is the best way. You have a parents who are wealthy enough to support for a couple of years. Take the money from your girl or your boyfriend. Interesting thing is also that if you go to the university, you will have a free spare time to play with things. So get funded by the states, go to the, any kind of government bureaucracy who is doing something with the web, convince them that the web is working through the Drupal for them and go for it. So this is the other thing also. If you're in an IT company who is Java-centric, find a way to convince your boss that the Drupal is the right thing for them, for some kind of a project. Become an expert in that. Uh, the most funny option could be join a Drupal fo focused company. Expect a lot of work, perhaps not so much money at the start, but in a time you could advance in that as well. So, if you didn't success in that to convert you to a complete Drupal freak, uh, you at least know something about the Drupal to be capable of selling it. Perhaps if you have the seller qualities. Uh, who is the one that can be seen as potential customer? I don't know. But you should do your homework. Um, political parties, marketing agencies, any kind of business connections. Businesses in, us, in us, your country and abroad. Any kind of connection to the trade chamber of your company. They are often very uh, strong in Europe. Any kind of high-tech companies, NGOs. Uh, so do your homework. See who is actually using Drupal and try to find your place in that, in that market. The first thing that you need to do in this process is, of course, to invest a lot of time in your own website. Without that, nobody is going to believe you that you are capable of doing things for them in a limited amount of time and money. So uh, this leads me to an interesting question. Uh, how Drupal is actually sellable? What can you actually sell as a Drupal company? Well, my opinion is that you need to sell a kind of a vision, actually. Not a technology, a kind of a vision. Because principally, you know, uh, you need to compete with the commercial software as well. There are, I think, literally thousands of CMS systems. Drupal is just as one of them in the eyes of the customers, okay? Drupal is just a single piece of the IT that needs to have some kind of unique sellable quality for the customer that you need to find. So uh, I will talk later about what needs to be done to match with commercial vendors like Adobe, etc. But uh, when you start a Drupal company, you are competing with those guys, with WordPress, with Maganto guys, and uh, Joomla guys. So seeing a Drupal as a wall, I don't think that Drupal is as sellable as a CMS for the presentation websites. So uh, you cannot simply do a presentation website and say Drupal is the best thing. Joomla can do it better and better, quicker, and cheaper. Most important, cheaper for them. Uh, web shops, Magento, for instance, there are also other things. You are not in a web shop business. You are not in a presentation website business. You are not in the blog business. WordPress is doing that far, far, far cheaper than, than, than you can do. But as unique sell point for the customers, you can say uh, that you can offer all that and beyond. So principally what I see as unique sell point of the Drupal is that uh, if you're an expert and you're good enough, 
you can offer a business consultancy for solving actual problems of your customers, customers and uh, you can do that in a holistic and sustainable way. What does it mean? Holistic means you can offer practically anything, even beyond the things that your customer can actually uh, imagine. Sustainable, Drupal will work for them for years. There is no greater pain than to migrate your system from one platform to, to do another. This is also, let's say, a part of the market that, that you can uh, try to access. But for the customer, this is a great pain in the ass. To migrate from one thing to another doesn't only mean to migrate the content and the business workflow. You need to train the people. And this is the most scary part that you're going to actually need to take care of as well as of the, uh, as, as the programming. So this is an interesting slide. Um, I'm using it quite often. It is coming from Austrian uh, Design Association. Uh, it, it is a kind of web project guidance uh, when you can actually see how much time is used for different kind of projects. It is actually a little bit outdated, but concentrate on the template sides here, okay? Oops, here. So a small website, like the 10 pages, needs around, let's say, four main days for them. Medium websites with 10 templates need something, something about 16 main days. And if you go then to 20 templates, these things here start to grow exponentially, okay? So uh, web development is not a linear thing, and it is never going to be. So principally, work, the amount of work need to be done for a client uh, goes exponentially to the higher. Drupal, as most of you know, uh, are working very well at the enterprise. And enterprise actually starts beyond those things, down there. This also means, uh, as you all know, there is nothing that is actually small and simple in the web. So every project has some own quirks and problems. So. Uh, to start a business, you have a customers like that most of the time. Perhaps here you are. But you are actually with a Drupal very good position in the enterprise market. But when you start, you don't have a customers who are actually capable of uh, paying uh, those enterprise kind of websites. So there is a gap between Drupal and what is sellable at the start. So you need to survive that gap to the enterprise somehow. Um, as I said, Drupal goes straight to the enterprise. Small project will never pay off your time, except as the time that, has, that your customer has paid you to actually um, learn the things, okay? Uh, how many of you are working in a company that has made more than one million euros or other dollars last year? Anyone? Good. So, uh, for all the others, uh, what can you do to survive in the meantime? Match with big Drupal providers. There are some in Europe. Do your homework, so find them. Find leading media and marketing agencies in your local geographical area. Find other IT companies that don't have the Drupal uh, kind of expertise. Learn again to sell your services as a solution, not as a Drupal, as a technology. You're serving a solution to your customers, not a Drupal. But you also need to retain your technological strengths. Without that, you can sell it once, but you need to come again and again and again in the market. Also another thing, uh, Drupal is a kind of open source thing, which actually means that it has an open source approach in the development and in the, in the learning. Most of the enterprises speak another language, okay? Enterprises have their own language, their own time, how, how they're doing things, so you need to be capable of dealing with that. This means contracting on the enterprise level. Most of the time, enterprise companies 
will impose to you a contract template that is actually limit you a very much in all the things that, that you can actually do after the projects or, or uh, during the project times. Also, learn the usual processes that this enterprise is using. So, issue related things. We are actually using as a U, uh, U track in our company, but any kind of issue tra tracking tool that matches your own company is a good thing for you. Integrations, can you say? Integrations. All the other game uh, of uh, software that is actually needed to s support your working process. Okay? Learn about those things. The best thing to learn about those things is in an, another IT company, but if this is not possible f for you, spare some time to learn about those things. So, the biggest problem in the to uh, find a way to not be also a nice guy, but to define things precisely, who is doing what and when. I also see the growing need of the customer to actually be consulted about that, what can they actually do with their websites or their mobile presentation whatsoever. Um, so they need a lot of consultancy. You know? of doing the right consultancy. Um, that is actually meaning that you need to manage your customers, what they are doing, how they are doing, their workflows, their, their own company. So I see a growing need of our customer uh, that actually wants us to act as a business consultant. Not as a So learn that as well. Uh, when you have a lot of projects in the pipeline, you will be overwhelmed at the start. You need to find a way to manage that workload that is dropping on you. Okay? Find a way to handle it. At the start, most of the time, you will have countless sleepless nights, no weekends, no private life. So. Um, Either you do extreme sports and you have enough uh, strength to sustain that or find a way to manage, especially your personal life, because you can, before you actually get nuts. Because this is not, this not helping you, it's not helping your company and also it's, it's not helping your employees when you go nuts. Uh, so be capable and be ready to do those things at the start, last nights, weekends and holidays, but be also capable of finding a way to manage that those things does not happen too much in the future, okay? Be ready for that. Uh, references are relatively important because uh, why should anyone actually hire you as a triple developer? Who are you actually? So you need to be capable of building up references. One way of doing that is through Drupal community, but for most of the customers, Drupal community is not actually something very transparent. How can they actually see if the model that you have put under Drupal.org is actually worth of? Okay, there's number of downloads, there are number of views, this website, etc., etc. But also those small things are something that most of the customers are not capable of. So. Uh, the simplest thing is to do some references for a pro about the projects that, that you have delivered and to actually uh, be capable of bragging about that. The problem is that in the most of the enterprise um, contracts, there is a clause that is actually saying 
you are not allowed to talk about the project that you have delivered for us. And most of the people who are doing outsourcing for the other software companies are dealing with that. They are not capable about talking what they have, they have delivered. It's an unpleasant situation. Uh, how can you manage around that? We have done this at the start. We have traded our hourly rate to get the reference letters. It was very painful. I don't think that this is a uh, right strategy to make your business case sustainable. But if you don't see any other options, this could be done as well. Okay? You will often see the customers who have some business idea that you consider as very interesting, but they don't have a um, budget to fund you because they don't have 10, 20, 50,000 euros to actually fund you through the year. So in those cases, you can also think about offering a partnership to that company to become a partner of a product that you actually also own. And this is also an, a very good strategy for the future, but you need to be capable of financing that time in the meantime. Uh, when none of that is possible, then uh, some exit strategies are ask for a mail from your client that is saying we have worked for you X on those Y things. Okay? At least that. Something that you can not put on your website but you can show to your new customers or potentially new, new customers. If you cannot put it on your projects uh, part of the website or all references, then uh, ask to write a blog, we can work it for you on something at least. At least something that you can put on your, on your website. Uh, also, this is important in the, in the enterprise arena. Uh, the references and reference letter are not enough. You need to make it possible for your potential new customers to talk with your old or recurring customers. So ask them if your potential new customers can call them. Can anyone call you and ask how or what we, we have delivered? Software service, this is important as well. Um, learn from the big ones. Uh, Dries has also started the Molom after a while because the Drupal itself as a development is still a kind of a problem to get funded in the open source arena. So uh, developing your own products, if you have a, a good idea, time to do that, budget to do it, which is actually the same thing, try to do that as well. But I would say that this point six software as a service should not be started as a very first thing that your business is doing because you need a lot of technological experience to actually position yourself good and to do things right. So uh, unless you are very much assured in your capabilities, uh, try those other things for the start. So uh, during the, the growth of the company, there is an interesting point. Uh, I call it, I'll call it the magic number six. I have talked with several Drupal companies and most of them stuck after a while at the numbers of six employees. So there is a main guy who is leading a company, let's say four to five other people who are uh, working for him. But they are not capable of going beyond that. Um, Principally, if you're good in it in that what you're working, and you can, and if you can, if you can market your work very well, uh, your business is going to start like the Fibonacci. Okay, so uh, one is not a team. Okay, then two people, then three, five, then you came to the number of six, and then you stop that because a kind of a six team people is still manageable by most of us. After that, you need structures in your, in your company to be actually be, be capable of managing what is happening around. Um, at that point, you have some recurring customers, which is a very good thing. Uh, you have at least 
50% of the resource coverage. What that means, it actually says that 50% of your time is billable to someone, at least. And we have two plus projects in a pipeline. So this is the turning point for the most of the IT companies that are doing things in the, the um, Drupal arena. Um, so we need more people, <laughs> let's say. Uh, at this point of time, you need to be ready to invest yourself in the tutoring, I think, because uh, most of the people who are actually relatively good Drupal experts are hired by, by summer, or they actually are working as a freelancer, so um, they're not interested in us, in us working with you. So you need to tutor new people. Um, the downside of that is that you also need to take care of uh, the actual fact that 25% of the people will change their IT companies during this year. And that can also be your own company. And you have invested a lot of time in someone and he's going away. So uh, someone is not liking Drupal or is starting their own business. But most of the times, if you are capable of providing good projects, they will stay with you. Okay. But Drupal is not everybody's darling, so someone who's coming from the Java enterprise will have, well, at least until Drupal 8, a hard time to get into the game. So be ready for that. Uh, when you start to think about the growth, and this is an experience value that has came out from the CXO event on the, on the DrupalCon Prague, uh, this is perhaps the right point of time in time when you can do that. You have an expense structure, which means salaries and office costs, at least, that is covered. You don't need to worry about the salaries for the next month. And you have three months reserves. And if you have 60% of your income of your company that is actually coming from the recurring customers, this is the right time to grow and to um, push forward your company. So those are some experience values that have proved more or less. Perhaps you will be capable of uh, beating them somehow. Um, at the end, uh, you should have invest the time of yourself and your people into giving back to the community. Uh, it is important to build up an open source reputation. Uh, not only a reputation of someone who is providing for the customers, but also an open source reputation. Uh, we knew a guy uh, who has delivered the WinTropic in a uh, search web, website. It was in Drupal. Nobody knows about him. Because he is not exposed to those. And if he leaves his company, nobody's going to ever know what he has actually done. He was at the center of this project. So be ready to expose yourselves because things change in a time. Uh, you will get through that also hand-on knowledge of the technology insights. Drupal is a beast actually and uh, we can talk to the outside world when we sell the Drupal that this is a wonderful thing, it can do everything, it can smooth your business process etc etc etc. But if someone is going to start to uh, scratch under the hood he will know that you need to be relatively good at that. So, um, if you're digging inside of the Drupal, Drupal core, Drupal modules, you will get to know about the things that is going to make you more sellable and easily sellable. You will, feel, you will also feel well during the process. Most of us feel well when do that. Um, from the management point of view, um, at least at some level, when you're hiring enterprise, people are going to start asking the right questions. So, uh, all through currently, and I say currently, right now, there are not exposed Drupal certificates at the outside. Aqui is doing something on that. Um, your exposure to the community will be the only thing that your uh, informed customer can actually measure somehow. This is the only thing that actually, actually exists. Enterprise projects tend to be very boring as well. You know? uh, there is a lot of process in that, a lot of telephones, telcos, 
lots of emailing, lots of project management things that's actually draining the capabilities of productive people to something that they don't actually like to do. So this is helping you as well to make your team focus and you can tell them, well, you know, I'm dealing with now with this customer X who is actually very yeah, unpleasant guy, but uh, after that we can do something about, about the Drupal 8 or develop a new module. So this is keeping the spirit high as well. Uh, and if you're digging inside of the Drupal, and this is the, I think, most important thing from the business point of view, you will be ahead of the trends and you will know what is actually happening in the web arena or the mobile arena and you will be capable of consulting your customers in a proper way. And this is the most valuable thing that uh, you can actually get, that, that your customer trusts you also for their own future. So, this is a big point that I didn't actually solve yet. And most of the Drupal companies didn't solve that, so this is the reason why uh, this small print is around. Uh, when you start getting big, uh, you're going to get uh, into the arena where there are custom vendors, like Adobe, for instance. And Adobe or IBM are capable of giving 50 Ks of something plus just to win a single quote. This is the budget that they actually capable of throwing inside to actually be capable of making a quote. So, uh, most of the Drupal companies, especially in, in Europe, are, are small shops. They are not in that arena. So this is a hard a problem that, that, that is hard to solve. Uh, commercial vendors are also capable of giving shiny papers and offer extensive support that goes beyond the product, okay? It's not only a software, it's a whole package that they're actually trying inside. So uh, if you're in a position to do a bit like that for let's say e-government website, find help beyond Drupal, find companies who can do uh, content things, who can do uh, cloud things, who can do all the other things that you are actually not capable of, that are not your expertise. Um, commercials can also do intensive marketing. They are throwing away its letters, newsletters, uh, parties, events for the potential customers. They are investing in a future during the time. They are not interested oft in selling right now. They are interested in selling themselves in the future. Uh, as a small vendor, you cannot rent this place for three days, okay? Just to get one customer. But you can actually sell that community feeling and you can sell the freedom that they're actually getting from not getting into the vendor lock. Um, the other big problems when you are matching with uh, commercial vendors is that they have teams that are actually trained in selling their things. They're not doing software, they're not doing management, they're not doing administration, they're only doing selling things. And they're trained for a couple of years or, or more just to sell the products of their company. Oft in the enterprise arena you have a pitching problem that uh, a customer wants to see something. It's not a hackathon, but they want to see a kind of a, let's say, a more or less working prototype. They are not prepared to pay for that most of the time. <laughs> so you need to be risk if you want to work in the enterprise arena. Uh, that unpaid work. Uh, another problem is that most of our Drupal companies are actually pulled away from the project once it is, once it is delivered. And they stay on the technological side just to consult a little bit, uh, to make those things with the screwdriver a little bit tighter and so on. So, um, commercial vendors are actually 
not getting most of their money, as I see it, through the selling of the software services or the product. They are getting the money through the license fees, recurring licensing fees, and uh, extensive and extensive support. So um, you need to see it, how you can beat those things. What are the actual total costs of ownership that are, they are getting better? Because the, I think that this is the only argument that you can actually throw into, in, in, into this game. That, uh, I know, uh, services that is Acquia offering are 50% less than Adobe services, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, if you start to s talking straight money right now, most of the CEOs or CXOs who are at their position for a couple of years will say, okay, during my time, things will be less money. Okay? The problem with enterprise clients is that pitching process can take some time. Especially if you're doing, let's say, with uh, United Nations organizations. Uh, you will get into the problems that things take some time. Uh, so, things will take some time. Don't count on that, that enterprise business will uh, pay right away and pay everything. And don't count on that, that you will win the project. Okay, this is not a good, good argument when you want, to, want your company to, to survive. And importantly, go to the enterprise arena. Only if you can already make a living from your recurring customers. So, this is a way how you can push your company outside of the six-man box to the enterprise arena. But the things are really starting to get interesting. So, that's it as more or less. If you have any kind of question, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the ratio between technical people and non-technical people in, in such a company? You have technical people, developers, teamers, site builders, system administrators, and no technical people. That's an interesting question. Uh, in our own company, you know, we are technically driven, you know, and uh, sales is let's say something like the fifteen percent of our actual resources. But it is not an actual number of resources in a time because uh, my Drupal coding uh, capabilities are less than limited, let's say. Okay. I am capable of uh, creating a small website, putting things, things together, but I cannot actually uh, make a working prototype for the customers. And most of the time, um, Support from technical people, especially from your Drupal Star developer, is needed, needed in the pitching process. So, um, you cannot do just marketing, you know. You need to be capable of also doing some kind of uh, technical things, I think. And also you need to be capable of driving the technical people from their projects into the pitching process, process into the selling process. So, uh, I don't have the actual numbers, but I think that, um, let's say, 25% of our resources or time is actually occupied with that uh, to sell things. Uh, 25. Something about 20, let's say, 10 to 15 times is occupied, and, and, that, and that should be more about trying to sell ourselves as, uh, as an expert through different channels, you know. And rest of that is um, actually, you know, sellable time that needs to be sold as well. Dries had an interesting uh, blog a couple of days ago about uh, making a case for um, uh, 30 people company that is in the Drupal Arena need to be capable of paying one guy that, that's actually doing uh, courtings, you know. And at the end of that blog, there is a kind of uh, small schema where he's actually saying, okay, if you want a kind of 30 people and a kind of 50% of profit of your company per year, you need to be capable of selling in the USA, let's say, 75% uh, of your uh, technical staff time, you know, 
read that blog. It's an, it's an, it's an interesting uh, small example of how things are actually computed down there in the USA. I'm not saying that this thing is translatable to the Europe and European things because um, our market is, is very fragmented. But uh, that can point you to that where things can actually start to work. So there's a lot of work about. I mean, this is only a slide which is not very presentable, you know. There is no shiny pictures of smiling people and things like that. You need to also be also capable of doing that part. Takes time. Okay, anyone else want to start a Drupal business on a million scale? A little bit smaller? 100K? Okay, any kind of questions? Well, there are no candies, but I can leave you free. Anything else? Okay, so thank you for your time. I hope that you can find something interesting for you and as useful for you. And see you next year. I do have a couple of us.